Right, well, uh, I bet you don't like AGMs. I don't either, so this will be quick. Um, first of all, I'd like to invite to the stage Dave Palmer, who is our secretary, and David Brooks, our treasurer. Um, they were hiding backstage. Non-members are welcome to stay, of course, but please only vote if you're a member of HOSS. So I declare the 45th AGM of the Hampshire Ornithological Society open. We have apologies from ab for absence from a number of people who've emailed, but if anyone in the room wishes to give apologies for anyone else that they've been asked to, please shout them out now. Good. The minutes of the 44th AGM, 1st of April 2023, you were all sent that with your copy of Kingfisher. We've not been notified of any corrections, so I'm going to invite a proposer and a seconder to accept the minutes as an accurate record of the meeting. Now, please do shout out, because it's quite hard to see who is uh, putting their hand out. Um, so first of all, a proposer, please. Carol Rawlings. So my eyesight's not too bad. And a seconder, please. Yep, Guy Mitchellmore, thank you. And now, a show of hands. All in favour? Any against? Thank you very much indeed. So, there were minutes, as you saw. Are there any matters from those minutes that anyone wishes to raise as a question at this stage? There will be other points in this session to ask questions. If there is anything that was raised last year you want to go back on, uh, please raise your hand. If not, I will carry on. I don't see any hands raised. So, um, HOSS is big. We are bigger. We recruited 144 new members in 2023. And that means that we've actually recruited nearly 600 members in the last four years. Astonishing. That's actually twice the size of some bird clubs, 600. And it's actually more than we could fit in this hall if all those new members came in. So it's just as well they didn't. <laughs> Every year, we're recruiting more people than we lose. And that is great. And we want to get bigger. So when you go out past the front desk, you'll see these little cards, just a business card. We all go birding, we meet people who ought to be members of HOSS and they're not. Carry two or three of those with you, hand them a card and tell them all about what we do. That would be fantastic. So just pick those up, they're on the front desk where you registered. Now, I've always said this, everyone's welcome. And I think that's a really important message today. And I'm really about knocking down barriers for entry. You know that, so I won't go on about it. We want anyone who cares about wildlife and birds to be members of HOSS. If you care about birds, you're welcome here. Our 80 young members are absolutely terrific. You've seen them before. When Chris and I were young, we were known as junior members of whatever bird club we joined. We were often ignored. And let me assure our young members, you will not be ignored. You're the center of our plans. And when we have the panel discussion this afternoon, it'll be the young members' questions that you will hear first before the rest of you. I'd like to give a particular thank you to the Cameron Bespolka Trust, who are instrumental in helping us to get our young member program started. And they're still with us today. Do go and say hello to them in the exhibition halls. And if you know of a young person, either at school or university, who's from Hampshire or in Hampshire, then let them know about us and we'll try and help them. And similarly, our support for female birders is something I'm very proud of. It's grown. We have almost 100 in our WhatsApp group now, and it's only open to female members of HOSS. Uh, they organize private birding trips in addition to what HOSS does. Uh, it's a friendship group. And it's a sharing of photos. If you'd like to join that, then there's a sign-up form, again, on the registration desk. This year, we're looking at woodlarks, a very important bird in the New Forest. And um, we had 300 one-kilometer squares that we had to allocate out to our members. How long do you think it took us to allocate 300? One week. You signed up for 300 squares in one week. And that is citizen science at its best, so thank you. We've also been looking at Dartford warblers and marsh tits, and you'll be hearing about that just a little bit later. This woodlark survey, we're getting paid to do it by, by the people in the New Forest. It's going to put £11,000 into Hoss's pocket, into our reserves. 
And that is fantastic because, of course, it costs us almost nothing to do a survey like that. And you'll hear in a moment from our treasurer that the money you pay to be a member of HOSS only just about covers the cost of the bird report, the newsletters, and organizing a big event like this. You know, you pay for what you get, but we do need to look at our costs going forward. And one thing I want to ask all of you to do is really think about going digital with Kingfisher in 2024. A number of you already take it as a digital download. It saves trees, and it saves us money, and it's the way most organizations are going now. And we know from informal chats with you, about half of you at least would convert to digital if asked to. So we're going to ask you to. You will receive later on this year an example, if you're online that is, with email, an example of a page turn version of Kingfisher. And what we will say is that we will transfer you to that unless you tell us not to. And we know that not everybody can read digitally and not everyone's on the internet. And we respect that. So you will have the option of staying with the hard copy for now. But if at all possible, please do change. And we've been really successful in getting money in. So over the last six years or so, we've won six different contracts. That's brought in over £50,000 to our coffers. And you'll see today that we now have about £120,000 in our reserves. It's a lot of money for an organisation like this. Now, we do give several grants annually, but the great thing about having 120,000 there is we will have the opportunity at some point in the future of making a very big and sizable donation at the right time, or several smaller ones. But what I want to say is this, we're not going to fritter it away just to look good on paper. We want to find the right project, and that will be coming to us before long, I'm quite sure. So we've actually allocated money towards conservation projects um, and, and other things like this. So Tommy Saunders asked for some help. He's doing all the raptor climbing in the New Forest this year, and we've given him £500 towards buying more climbing equipment so he can do that. Now, Tommy's a trustee of Hoss, so we made sure he left the room whilst we discussed it. And you've probably seen our turn rafts down at Blashford Lakes, a fantastic place. Well, they needed a bit of... Uh, TLC, so we've just paid £950 to have them refurbished. And we've given £540 for Swift boxes to go into the Hospital of St Cross with Hampshire Swifts. And already this year we've spent over £1,000 in this financial year to help people who are putting up nest boxes for declining species in Hampshire. And we've also continued our work supporting schools, particularly in inner city areas, with nest boxes like this so they can see wildlife in their school. And if you, are, you have grandchildren at schools, if they want to get involved in that, I'm sure we'd like to fund that for you too. So talk to us about it. HOSS is busy. There's no doubt about it. Um, our bird surveys, the conservation work, the outings, sales, the young member programme, the lady birders group, they called it that, not me by the way, the Kingfisher magazine, the bird report, the people who collect the money, the people who spend the money, all of them are volunteers. And most of them are in the room right now. Give them a, a very, very big clap. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions or comments about what I've just talked about that they would like to raise right now? Or well, if not, I will go on and invite David Brooks to present his figures. Okay, David, over to you. Thanks, Steve. Morning, everyone. Um, I know Keith likes to keep things quick, so I think we should be able to contain this within an hour or so. Um, <laughs> so the accounts um, of which have been independently examined by Joy Albin, who's a member, and the Treasurer's Report and uh, Independent Examiner's Report have been on the website now for about a month. Uh, after this meeting today, we, myself and Dave, will do the annual return and file the accounts with the annual return to the Charity Commission. Uh, the accounts are prepared on a receipts basis, so that means it's just cash only, it's cash for the year. Um, in summary, our income for the year was £52,486, expenditure £36,575, 
with a net result surplus of 15,911, which, when added to the opening reserves, takes our closing reserves and unrestricted funds to £122,886. Um, the accounts themselves are on one sheet of paper, but so you can read it, uh, we've got it on four slides. The first slide here being the receipts. So looking at, I'll just pick a few of the items there. Membership subscriptions, you'll see that they've up, they've up by about 2,400. Now, I will say that um, the membership renewal reminders were sent out earlier in December this year, and that tempted about 100 or so members to actually pay their 2024 subs early. So in that figure is about £1,600 of 2024 subscriptions. The balance, £800 being net increase in membership during the year. Keith mentioned about 140 Well, each year we do lose some members, but about £800 is, is additional um, members' income. Uh, donations there, that's a big jump. Uh, two items of note in there. One is the bid for an expert that took place last year. And thank you to Steve Edgerton Reed, Keith, uh, Andy Page, and Pete Donnell for offering their services for a half a day. That raised £895. Um, that is, again is happening again this year, and I think the auction closed at midday today. So if anyone is still keen to get involved in that, there's still the opportunity to, to make a bid. Um, the other main item in there is a very generous donation by David Yaldron, who asked that instead of birthday gifts, it's his 80th birthday, people give donations to Haas, and that raised £450. Um, gift aid, slightly down. Uh, that's really dependent on the people who tick the box. I've just submitted this year's um, return, and it's about £4,500, so it's good to see people that are increasingly ticking the box. Um, Big jump in interest on deposit accounts there. At the back end of last year, or during last year, 2022, about £60,000 was put on one-year deposits with various banks, and that raised about £1,500, which came into this year. Along with that, we've seen quite an increase in the interest rate and also more money on deposit during the year, so that's really the, the main reason for the increase there. I just want to make a point on... Sorry, you jump back, Keith. <laughs> Um, Rare Birds of Hampshire book, um, we've got there the income. You'll see that the main chunk of that income, the £12,000, was in 2022 when the, the book was launched. And uh, you'll see on the next slide in the payments that there's a similar pattern of uh, reduction. Now, originally there was um, 650 purchased. We purchased 500. And John Clark kindly purchased, us, purchased the other 150. Uh, that was on the basis that once we broke even, we would buy that stock off of John. And that has happened. So we've now got uh, about 150 of the books to sell. And um, I think John's here today to sign, and he's also signed a number of copies. So, um, like I say, overall, we've uh, made a profit so far of about £400 pounds on that, and uh, with about 150 books to sell. <coughs> Moving down to survey and data sales, um, big item in there is the... Uh, Dartford Warbler survey, which Keith mentioned. We received £8,000 from Forestry England for that. Um, I'd like to thank Rob Clements and Nigel Matthews for coordinating that and writing the report, and also, I think, 80 or so volunteers who, who helped out on that. The other main item in there, about £3,000, is um, money we get from Hampshire County Council uh, for the data... We, we provide data to Hampshire Biodiversity Information Centre. So that accounts for mostly £11,000. Uh, just one more item on this slide. Members' Day. Um, that is showing a decrease in the previous year, 1900. I will say that in that 1900 in the prior year, uh, that includes £1,100 refund from St Swithin's for 2020 catering costs, which we paid for. And then come last year, they withdrew the catering, so they repaid the £1,100. The £1,250 includes £900 from the raffle sale last year, which is a fantastic. You'll see the raffle sellers here today, so hopefully we might beat that total. We'll see. So that's uh, a summary of the 52,000. Then moving on to payments. Yeah, grants and donations. You'll recall last year that Keith um, handed over a large cheque to Juliet Vickery for £5,000 to go towards the avian influenza uh, project uh, they were carrying out. Um, Someone else we got in there. 
Yeah, as Keith mentioned earlier, that we've also paid £500 towards uh, Tommy Saunders' climb equipment. I've been out with uh, um, Tommy and uh, Andy Page and seen him shooting up these trees, and it's quite impressive. And uh, he's doing an awful lot of work, Tommy, so well deserved. And as Keith mentioned also, uh, just over £1,000 was uh, donated to Blashford Lakes for the repair and refurbishment of the, uh, the turn um, platform, and also an advert for us on there as well. Um, Kingfisher Cast, you'll see that they've fallen dramatically. Um, during 2022, we noticed that uh, the cost had taken quite a hike, so our editor, um, Carol Rawlins, did a project, and that resulted in a change in the printer, a change in the paper, uh, a much better rate for postage, and also a slight reduction in the number of pages in Kingfisher. Still three editions a year, and I think it's still great quality. Uh, but like I say, we've saved about £4,000 on that. Um, Rare Birds of Hampshire, I've mentioned that, and we'll see the stock on the, on the final page. Um, Members' Day and AGM events. Looks like a big increase there. I mean, most of that cost relates to the hire of the hall for the day, about £2,000. Uh, again, in 2020, we paid for the hire, and that was carried forward to last year. So last year, effectively, had three because we paid for it two years earlier. So that explains the increase there. Um, I'd also like to make a mention of the uh, Hampshire Bird Report 2022. You'll see there, that's the second item, it's about £11,000. Um, I'd like to thank Mike Chalmers and uh, all the contributors to that, because there's no cost involved in that. All those costs are external costs. And the £600 increase is really £600, sorry, £400 of postage and about £200 additional cost from the printer. Um, Insurance costs, yeah, they're a small number, but it's increased quite a lot, and we've actually extended our cover to take account of our equipment. We've got two thermal images, we've got a drone, and we've now got nest inspection equipment. Um, yeah, the only other I'd like to mention there at the bottom there, the equipment, I've shown that separately. That's the uh, nest inspection camera and the pole. That was used for the survey for red starts in the new forest and you'll be hearing about that from Tara later. So in some of you will see there that net receipts 15,910, last year's reserves 106, meaning at the end of the year we've got 122,886 pounds in various accounts. So look at the next slide Keith. So our money now, uh, we've got, a, we keep a minimal amount in the current account and I switch money between that and the Lloyds deposit account. Uh, we took a decision to move to an ethical bank for our investments. Uh, so we've got uh, £51,871 on a 100-day notice deposit with Charity Bank and also a one-year bond, which will mature later on this year, making up the £122,000. I haven't given anyone the opportunity of rushing, so I'm going quite quickly. Has anyone had any questions on anything I've said so far? Sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, and the final slide, really, this is just a summary of our stock on hand. I mentioned that we've now got paid for the additional copies of the Rare Birds of Hampshire, and that's on sale to our exhibition, 157 copies. I will mention one other item, and that is the uh, microfiber lens wipe. So we've added a new line of stock, and uh, they've been selling like hotcakes, and I think we bought some earlier this week, and I hope uh, we've got some in stock today. That, so uh, we hope to sell quite a lot of those. So... I'd like to make the following thank yous. I'd like to thank Joy Orbin, who's our independent examiner. Joy's a member, and she offers her services free of charge, which is very kind. I'd like to thank my predecessor, Andy Mitchamore, for his uh, advice and assistance and a very smooth handover. I'd like to thank Kay Shillito, our membership secretary, and Nicola Whitmarsh, our sales officer, who uh, give me a lot of information, and it's always faultless what they give me. And I'd also like to thank the I think it's at least 100, 120 volunteers who give everything for nothing, which contributes to a wonderful society. So thank you very much. David asked you if you had any questions. I think no hands went up. You've got a question here.
Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I Chris, Chris banks with them already. Yeah. Thank you. Got the message for that. Chris has been talking to me about that already. So yeah, it's on the agenda for sure. Thank you. Uh, a good point and well made. Thank you. Um, any others? I see a hand there. Billy. Billy Roger. Are there any plans to make the Google Bird report digital? There are. Uh, I'll answer if that's okay, David. We, are, we, we, we did a vote in the hall a couple of years ago, and I said to people, what about Kingfisher? And half the people put their hands up to say yes. And we asked people about the Bird report, and not so many went, went up. But what we are talking about doing is making it an option for you. We're going to do... Kingfisher first, but the option would be that you can get the bird report digitally instead of printed, because we know a lot of people feel that way. Another question there. All, all the all the past bird reports you'll find up to 2018 are on the website already. Um, there's a bit of a gap because we've got to do a bit more scanning, but they're there already. And the 19 one will go on there very soon. Any other questions? I want to ignore the people upstairs. David, thank you very much indeed. Um, let me just ask if I could have a proposer and a seconder for those accounts. First of all, a proposer, please. Um, John Clark, I see, has a hand up there. Thank you. And also a seconder. Martin Pitt, thank you very much indeed. And now, uh, all those in favour, hands up. Any against? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, David. Right, uh, election of officers. I've been in the chair now for seven years, and our rules allow a person to be chair for a maximum of ten years. The ideal is five, but uh, so I've agreed with the trustees that I will stay on for at least another year, and I'm happy to do that. So here are our proposals for the lineup of trustees and other officers for the next 12 months. So first of all, my thanks to the departing trustees. Jane Chapman stood down as an elected member in August, and we thank her for sharing her enormous wealth of knowledge on conservation across the county. Uh, Andy Lester has moved to Cumbria, and we wish him well. Um, he's not only been a trustee, but also acted as our conservation officer for about five years. And I'm pleased to say that George Baker has agreed to take that role on going forward. Marcus Ward spent seven years as the chair of the scientific subcommittee, and he's understandably decided to stand down after that long time. Uh, and the committee is made up of busy people, and as there's no immediate successor, I've agreed to cover that role for the time being. Um, at the same time, Andrew Colnut, who has served as secretary of that committee for five years, also decided to stand down. Um, and I'm very pleased to say that the new BTO rep for Hampshire, George Bartho, has very kindly agreed to take that role on. So thank you, George. Janice Beck has completed her term of three years. She's a key member in that she runs our young member program and she acts as our safeguarding officer. So we will actually co-opt her at our first meeting of the council um, after this so that she can attend our meetings over the next year. And I want to thank my... Uh, everyone who's helped us. Some of them are not trustees. Nicola Whitmarsh runs our hugely successful sales operation. And Alan Cox, who I can see in the second row there, manages our, our records database. And this year, he'll be sorting out about half a million of your bird records. That's an amazing achievement. We're very lucky to have trustees with lots of skills. And we have one new elected member joining us this year for a three-year term. And that is Roger Dickey. Roger, can you do stand up? Roger it brings a lot of experience. He's chair of the Army Ornithological Society. He's also a past chair of the Somerset Ornithological Society. He's been a trustee of the BTO, and he's a very active bird ringer, so he'll bring a lot of experience too. So there's the lineup on the screen, uh, including Tommy Saunders and Di Warner and Helen Schneider, who already are in there as elected members. Um, again, I'd like to ask if people could, um, someone could... Uh, propose those as our trustees. Thank you. And your name? 
Oh, it's Paul. Paul Wellings. And a seconder, please. Your name, please? Paul Beresford. Thank you very much indeed. And a quick show of hands. All in favour? Any against? Thank you very much indeed. Well, that's the end of the formal business uh, within the AGM. But if there's anyone who wishes to raise a point or ask a question uh, on all of that, if you haven't already, this is an opportunity to do that. I don't see any hands going up. Um, good. Well, thank you very much for making that nice and easy.